One of the things that we've learned to do in CPLEX is to load in variables and parameters using the data files. Now, in this case, what we are doing is we are actually typing in um, the values one by one. But it's often the case that we might end up getting all our values and parameters in an Excel file, right? So you could imagine somebody gives you a whole big Excel file with a bunch of data and you want to solve some optimization problem related to that data. Now, CPLEX actually allows us to import in uh, this data. Um, and it's based on using two main functions. All right, so one of them is called sheet connection. This space basically allows CPLEX to connect to an Excel file. All right. Once it's sort of made this connection with the Excel file, which you can think of as just opening up the file, it then performs a function called sheet read. And what sheet read will do is read in values from your Excel spreadsheet. Now, um, the way these functions sort of work is with sheet connection, um, you actually put this in your DAT file. So, so in your DAT file, you're going to call a function sheet connection you're going to pass to it a connection name. And really, this could be anything. You could call it my spreadsheet or um, data to my problem. doesn't really matter whatever you call it, um, but you just need to give it a name. Okay. Uh, the next thing that you're going to pass to this function is the location of the file. And you're going to want to put the location of the file, or the file name in particular, um, inside of quotes. And again, these uh, green brackets just indicate this is like the, the part that you replace. Okay. And so anything with green brackets, you're going to sort of fill in with your own thing. All right, so this will make a connection to whatever spreadsheet you're telling CPLEX to use. All right, the next step is to use the sheet read function. All right. um, now, the sheet read function is actually going to read in the variable that you want. And so in this case, what you kind of do is you say, whatever variable name we're talking about, All right. You're going to grab that variable um, using the sheet read function. Okay. And for the function sheet read, you're going to pass it two items. The first one is the connection name. And so this is the same connection name that... Um, we had before when we did sheet connection. And you're also going to tell it a location. Okay. And usually this is in double quotes as well. Okay, so this is the location in your spreadsheet. All right, now I'm going to show two different ways in which you can reference a location. Um, and they're actually kind of neat. So the way that you probably know is we might say something like sheet one exclamation point um, a5 colon a10 okay and so what this would do is grab five values from the spreadsheet all right now there's another neat little trick in excel you can actually label uh, values in your Excel spreadsheet. So instead of giving the location, you could actually say something like 
grab all the data that's in the cells that are named profit. All right. So this is actually really neat functionality because all you have to do is sort of label all the um, values that you want to load in and you can do it. Or alternatively, if you sort of um, know the dimensions of everything, you can go ahead and use this um, just hard code and the uh, locations of the cells. Okay, now the one thing you have to make sure of is that your Excel spreadsheet is actually located with all your files in your workspace. All right, so that's the only little trick. Um, so this is a really neat way to sort of import data. Now, certainly CPLEX has other ways of importing data. So if you do a little programming, you can import a CSV file, which is very useful. Uh, you can also uh, import data by connecting to databases. Now, this is a bit more advanced functionality, especially because apparently it seems in this latest version of CPLEX, uh, they made it a little bit harder to do. So you actually have to download somebody else's code. Whereas before you kind of said like, connect a database, uh, select star from table where, you know, whatever, if you know your standard MySQL, you could just put in a MySQL command. Okay, but with that, let's sort of uh, show how we can do this uh, procedure to load in data from Excel. Okay, so, what I have saved right now is I created a spreadsheet okay, with the data that we previously had from our transportation problem. Okay, so this is our old transportation problem where we were loading in the data. Let's see, why is that giving me that? Um, Yeah, so this is our old data file. Okay, so as you can see in this file, on sheet one, and I think there's a little space here between sheet and one, so this is sort of an important point that I'll point out. I have the value M and N. I also have a C matrix. On another sheet, I have the supply. And then finally, I have the different demands. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this two different ways. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you can label your data. Okay. So for this case, I'm just going to leave these two values unlabeled. Okay. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to label these C values. Okay. So one thing that you can do is you can highlight the cells. And then right here, this is called a name box, I guess and you can label it. So I'm just going to label it C. Um, sometimes it doesn't really like if you label things like simple letters because I think it thinks it's referencing the um, the column. But let's see. So um, so it did not take that. So let's call it C mat. Maybe that will work. Yeah, there we go. So now you can see it's called C mat. Um, I just did that for C matrix. Um, certainly, we can go ahead and, you know, name each of these if we'd like. So, I'll call this supply. And I will call these three values the demand. Right. Okay. And so, again, I'm just leaving M and N. I'm actually not going to name these. We'll sort of load them in um, by give providing the location. Okay. So at this stage, you know, maybe I have this file and this particular file is actually saved on my desktop. The first thing that we need to do is to get that that Excel spreadsheet into the same folder as the files uh, that I'm running. So the model file and the data file. Okay. Now you might not remember what folder this is in. Um, so just to help you do that, you can always right click on your project workspace. You can go down to properties. 
all right? And it will give you the location of that workspace here. So you can go ahead and just um, click this button and it actually takes you um, to the folder. Okay, so let's open up the folder. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save this Excel spreadsheet in that folder. So again, um, right now it's in my desktop. So what I can go ahead and do is I'll, oops, close everything off. So here goes that uh, Excel spreadsheet. Here goes my third LP. And I'm gonna copy and just paste this into that folder. Oops. Oh, because the file is open. Okay, so I'll go ahead and close this. And now I should be able to drag it in there. Okay, so at this stage we have the file in the same folder. I'm gonna open it back up again just so we can be sure about uh, what values we're referencing and make sure we're doing everything right. Moving back to Excel or uh, Cplex, um, you won't see the file there immediately. So if you want to see it, you can go ahead and just type in refresh, and you should now see the file. Okay, now um, before it was unlabeled data. You know, certainly I labeled all the things. Um, you could rename it if you want; doesn't matter. All right. So we're gonna use the same structure that we did before where in our model file, we sort of do this dot, dot, dot. And it tells Cplex that it's gonna load the data, that's sort of an indicator, that it's gonna load the data from the, the dat file. All right. So what we're gonna do is instead of loading M, N, C, S, and D um, by typing in manually, we're gonna load it from the Excel spreadsheet. So. As I said, the first thing that we need to do is to create a sheet connection. So um, maybe I can call this my transport data. And again, you can call it whatever you want. Um, and what we need to do is we need to point it to the file. All right, so this file is transport data unlabeled. dot xls x okay so at this point we've created the connection all right the next thing that we're going to have to do is we're going to load in the values for each of our parameters using the sheet read function okay so we're no longer we'll start by sort of commenting out m and n and we're going to say well let's load in m so we'll say m from sheet read, okay, so that's the, the standard function name. And we're gonna pass it the connection, okay? So we've passed the connection. The next thing that we wanna do is we wanna tell it where it's gonna grab the value M from. All right, so if we open up our spreadsheet, we see we have sheet one, and then we are going to be referencing B1. All right. Now, the reason why I'm using this example, so normally sheet one has no space there, but let's pretend you had a space in uh, the sheet name. All right. Uh, this sometimes presents a little bit of a problem. And so the way that we handle this in Cplex is that when you reference the cell, all right, so uh, you might think, oh, I can do sheet one exclamation point uh, B1. Okay, so this might be something, and again, you need it in double quotes. Okay. And we'll do the same thing for N. Um, I don't think this will work, but we'll check. So I'll save that, and we'll go ahead and run. Actually, it might work. Wow, this surprises me. In Linux, it, or before, it used to throw up some issues. Oh, okay, yeah. So 
it's giving a few issues. So the first one, I think I'm missing semicolons. Now let's try that. Run it again. Ooh, so it gave us an error. All right. So it seems like if we go to this transportation data, we see an X here. So that sort of gives an indication that there's an error. And it's telling us we have an error over here. Um, and sure enough, we have a double quote. So let's get rid of that double quote. And we still have some sort of error that's happening. And... I'm going to try to run it one more time just to see if that error clears. And we still have an error. So Excel range is unknown. Okay. So what I think is happening here is it doesn't like that space that we have between uh, sheet and one. Unless I spelled sheet one wrong, but I don't think I did. Okay. Um, and the way we go about fixing that is you actually need to put single quotes around sheet one. And again, the issue is that because there's a space in the sheet name, it's sort of causing it to bark. So let's try this. So now I have single quotes around it. All right, I'm going to save this. It'll still give me an error. Very odd. Let's see. Okay, so I'm going to give this another shot. Oh, did it work? Yep, there we go. So that solved our issue. Okay, so we are able to load an M and N using the method. Um, the next thing we might want to do is load in C. Okay. Um, so we'll sort of, I'll copy and paste this, just so we don't have to do it all. And I'm going to change M to C. Um, we're still loading it from the connection of my transport data. Um, we're still using sheet one, but now what I want to do is I want to try to use this little trick of loading in the data using this label. All right? And so what's going to happen is we don't actually have to write A5 to, you know, A8 and, you know, I don't know, A5 to C5 or whatever, you know, the fact that it's a matrix. We actually don't need to do that. Um, what we can do instead is we can just pass it the label of CMAT. Right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just say CMAT. Right, go ahead and save that and see how that works out. So if we play our cards right, then we should see CMAT loaded into C there. It should match. All right, let's Of course, I should have commented that out. Um, it's complaining because C has already been set, right? So I, I defined C right here, and now I'm defining it again, so it's not too happy. All right. Let's press play. And there we go. We see C got loaded in. Um, and we can actually test to see if this is working. I'm going to go ahead and change one of these values. I'll change this to 3. Why not? I'll save it. And what we should see here is that the value 5 will change to 3 when we rerun our problem. And there we go. We see 3. All right. I'll put this back to five just so we can have that. Okay. At this stage, we can talk about loading in supply and demand. Um, again, we could do this two different ways. So if we wanted to, we could load S and D. 
and I'll just go ahead and start typing them using the labels or we could use uh, the actual position. So let's say we are to do S using the label. So here it's called supply. Go ahead and write supply. And maybe for um, the demand, for some reason, we wanted to just load in the data. So we wanted to just load in um, these values here. Okay. So let's actually do that. Um, bah, bah, bah. So how do we do that? Well, in CMAT, we would say we're going to load in the sheet demand exclamation point and then we're going to give the array so here it's b2 to b4 and so we're just using sort of standard excel notation and that should actually do it so what we can check that we get five or 15 5 20 right, so 15 5 20 that's what we should expect and again, the other thing we need to do is sort of comment out or delete um, the later definitions that we're no longer using. Okay. So at this stage, I'll press play. And there we go. We see it loading in all our variables. So that's pretty much how you load in um, an Excel spreadsheet. Of course, what you could do is if you had multiple spreadsheets, let's say you had spreadsheet data one, spreadsheet data two, you would just have to name these um, connections different names, right? And then you would reference each one depending on where you're loading in the data. Okay. So that's how you load in data in CPOX. And that will make your life a lot easier if you're loading in new problems or loading in new parameters for uh, a problem where the settings are changing um, and you want to try out different uh, parameter settings.